Good evening, everybody. Sorry for the delay. The reason uh, we're doing the dynamic doji is because people keep, uh, I get emails all the time saying, what signals do you go after? Do you have a preferred one? Um, and kind of in conjunction with our whole day training that's coming up on February 5th, where we're going to go again, where we did the mini training a few weeks ago on the uh, power signals. Now we're going to be combining that with the power patterns. And the whole point of all of that is if we can pretty well identify which direction the market is going, we want to make as much hay while the sun shines as we can. So we don't want to have just uptrending charts in an uptrending um, market or down trending charts in a downtrending market, we want to have the most powerful uptrending charts in an up market and the most powerful downtrending charts in a down market. So the, the reason I bring up the dynamic doji is because it is incorporated into numerous signals or patterns. And it's basically because it illustrates, uh, oh, Jim, can you help Fabian? Um, it illustrates indecision. Not only does that tell us something, but it's easy to identify what a doji looks like. Or a spinning top, which is kind of a uh, uh, no sound. I take it everybody else has got sound. Okay. You had to unmute. That's that usually solves some of the problems. All right. Yeah, chicken hawk's been with using candlesticks how long now? Over Fifteen years. Chicken hawk. Yeah, the reason same and the reason I saw you complaining about having to register. When you register, that way you can get a copy of the uh, the session. It's not sent automatic if you don't register. Okay, so a spinning top represents the same thing, indecision. So there's a very simple doji rule. There's only two rules that, uh, that you have to, uh, or that you can use that make a tremendous oh, benefit, uh, that's not the right word, a tremendous improvement to the probabilities of a trade. One is the doji rule. The price will usually move in the direction how they open after a doji, number one. And the T-line rule. The trend will usually move in the direction, uh, or a bullish trend will be a buy signal and a close above the T-line. You can stay long until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. Same scenario on the downside. If you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line, you stay uh, you stay short until you see a buy signal to close above the T line. Oh, Sandman, I think on the website there's a place. Jim, is there a place for them to go to get the download for the Monday night sessions? Please explain how clo close and open price has to be called. Please explain close and open price has to be called doji. Hey, gee, I don't understand what that question means. Please explain how close and open price has to be called a doji. Well, you can call it whatever you want. 
it's a doji in the sense that they open and close and it shows indecision between the bulls and the bears. Raj, hold on to your individual ones until I go to the live charts. What is a doji? A doji is where it opens and closes at the same, approximately the same level, or it closes at approximately the same level it opens. It represents indecision. <laughs> um, between the bulls and the bears. And the Japanese rice traders say whenever you see a situation where there's indecision, you want to take notice of it. And again, the doji rule is very simple. The price will usually move in the direction of how they open after a doji. So just very simple logic. If you see indecision in the overbought area, using stochastics above the 80 level, there's a simple rule. If you're up here in the overbought area and they open it lower, the Japanese rice traders say close out the position immediately. If you see a candlestick buy signal, a doji harami, in the oversold area, if it opens positive the next day, that gives you an extremely high probability you're now in an uptrend. So that doji is just kind of an alert to tell you Start watching for a change of investor sentiment. So two plus two analysis is merely saying if we see a doji, a hammer, a doji, a doji, all here in the oversold area, what's that kind of illustrating? And especially if it does it right here on a major moving average that everybody else is watching. If they start trading positive, that indecision, especially in the oversold area, tells us, now they've made a new decision. Is there a very small body in long wicks? That is also a doji. That's called a long-legged doji. I'll see if I have one in here. What if there is no classic buy signal, but the price closes or crosses the T-line? The... Uh, just the assumption, MJ, would be that if you see a candlestick bullish candle, but it's not a signal, it doesn't mean it won't be a, uh, and it closes above the T line, doesn't necessarily mean there won't be more upside. It's just not going to have the same probabilities or the same statistical uh, probabilities and magnitude as if it is a candle signal. So if I saw a up day in a, a chart, and then I saw another chart that had a candlestick reversal signal, obviously I'm going to go with a candlestick reversal signal because we know what the probabilities are, and that's based upon hundreds of years of uh, visual analysis from the Japanese race traders. So these create high probability setups. And here's some of the signals that you can get with candlestick signals. Remember, any or with a doji. Anytime you see a doji incorporated into a candlestick signal, it has that much greater probability that there's that that signal is working. Do you always wait till the next day if you doji forming at the top of a trend, the cassocks tilting slightly down? Uh, if Tom, that's also a not a subjective decision, but if you see a doji at the top in the overbought condition especially away from the T-line. Remember the T-line rule also has incorporated into it that the further away you move from the T-line, the higher the probability it's going to come back and test it. So if you see a doji up in the overbought area away from the T-line, yeah, you might start taking off at least half the position. If you see a doji away from the T-line or at the top with the casting starting to roll over, 
and you can see the market is starting to sell off. Yeah, that's giving you that warning. It's everything that we see on a candlestick chart is visual analysis of a change coming in investor sentiment. So if we see that doji at the top and the market's starting to roll over, take off half the position, start taking profits. Uh, are you referring to buy and sell signal candles as your classic bullish and bearish candles or other specific candles that you prioritize as a buyer? And Brent, I'm going to figure out what you're asking. Are you referring to buy and sell candles, sell signal candles as your classic bullish and bearish candles? Or are the specific candles that you prioritize? Well, I don't know what you're asking there. Try rephrasing that. Uh, Bert, we'll get to the live charts in a second. All right. So the best friend signal. Best friend signal, that's not it. How did I get this up here? This is just kind of an illustration. I stuck those in the wrong place, didn't I? No, I did. Not the best friend signal yet. But anytime I see a doji at a level that we can kind of anticipate might be relevant, such as the T line. That tells me, up. Oh, they couldn't get up through the T-line. If they open this lower, they're still heading down, which obviously they, they did. If I see a doji up here in the overbought condition, if I was long, I would definitely have a stop someplace, which in this case would be at the low of that doji, because if it came back down through there, what's it telling us? It's telling us the doji rule, and it's telling there's a lot of force in that selling. Now, remember, Anytime you see a doji incorporated into a signal, in this case, an evening star signal, that's that much more evidence that there is that change of investor sentiment. Why? Because the Japanese race traders have told us over the last 400 years, that if you see a doji at the top and they start selling off, take your profits. Then, as you can see how the evening star signal is more relevant because you've got a doji as the indecision day. Yeah, Tesla was down 110 today. We'll get, get to that. So this is where the visual analysis of candlesticks become that much greater uh, for defining a trend. Because if we see an evening star signal in the overbought area and it closes below the T-line, what can we assume? we can assume that they're heading for the next target, the 200-day moving average. This is what you call a blue ice failure. This was uh, coined, that phrase was coined by my late friend Dave Elliott of Wall Street Teachers. That you fall through, somebody falls through the ice, they come up trying to find the hole they fell through, they can't find it, which is the sell signal. They drown, where are they going? They're going to the bottom of the pond. So the reason this becomes more relevant is right here, we know that we have an extremely high probability that we're in a downtrend. A strong candlestick sell signal, the doji illustrating the evening star signal. And so now we can make a strategy that either we can be shorting the stock, we can be buying puts, we can be buying put spreads. At least we know we have an extremely high probability we're going to be heading in the right direction. Uh, let's see, what am I doing now? Oh, going to the same scenario here. I put this out on YouTube because there's two elements that you can use for candlestick trend analysis. One, trying to find the ones that are having the biggest probabilities of a strong downtrend, or let's put it this way. 
the prospects of having a very strong uptrend or downtrend. And then another element that says the probabilities are, are extremely great. Not necessarily a huge price move, but the probabilities of that price move moving in a certain direction becomes strong. Now, that's relevant because you could either be shorting the stock or you could be buying puts or you could be buying put spreads. At least you have a high probability uh, uh, trend analysis. Based upon your experience, the next candle after the doji, have you calculated how much will be the movement will be after the doji? No. Richie, that's that's the one uh, not that's the one variable. Now, that's why we're going. Well, that's why we're doing training on uh, next Saturday um, on which ones have the highest probabilities of not only being in the right direction but strong moves. And that's kind of what we're doing here on a cliff note session, uh, and which we'll get to here in a second. But the first thing we want to to point out is um, the probability factor. That if we see a doji and we can see where everybody else is watching, we know what that doji told us. It told us there was indecision here at the resistance level. And then our bearish left-right combo told us that alone told us we were in a downtrend. And you add the factor that they did it right at a level where everybody else is watching just improves the probabilities are heading for the next level. Would you sell apron near the end of the day as a bearish left-right combo? Uh, not necessarily. Well, in this case, I probably wouldn't have found it on that day because I've got so many other things going on that unless I did a scan near the late part of the day and looked for it, but I'm using you doing my scans after hours, and I'm finding this on a scan that showed which stocks had a big percent move. So if I see this on my big percent move scan to the downside, and I see that it was a like an evening star signal, doji, failure, you know, that's where I'm going to be recommending the next day if they start trading this lower, you want to be shorting it. All right. Yeah, so I'll get to some charts here where you don't necessarily know what the probability or what the magnitude of the move is, but the whole point of using candlestick analysis is to say, say there is a change of investor sentiment. We're in a new trend. Now we've got other indicators like the T-line that tell us how long to stay in that uh, trend. A left-right combo is a doji followed by a bearish engulfing signal. Now we know what a bearish engulfing signal is. That's a, uh, a, a, a bearish candle engulfing the body of the previous day. Well, it becomes even more powerful if the body of the previous day is a doji. Remember, anytime you have a doji involved with a uh, candlestick signal, it's usually going to be that much more potent and uh, potent as well as a, a bigger probability setup. So if I see this up here, I kind of factored we're heading down. If I see dojis up here, notice every time they took an indecisive day up to the 200, they failed. Stochastics heading down. This is what tells you you're probably in a high or in the right direction. And then if you see something like this, a lot of people say, well, shoot, I don't want to be shorting this now. It's down pretty big. That's telling you there's still a lot of weakness in this uh, trade. Look for wave three to the downside. Does engulfing have to cover the wicks? No, just the body. Brent, if you always remember what the Japanese rice traders consider the most important factors to produce a candle, that's where it opens and where it closes, which is the body. The shadows are just uh, the trading range. So a bearish engulfing or a bullish engulfing opens below the previous day's open and closes above 
the previous, no, say the other way. A bullish engulfing is where it opens below the previous day's close and closes above the previous day's open. So it completely engulfs the body of the previous day. I'll see if I can find some here as we go along. So this is what makes the uh, signals much more powerful than just a, uh, a update candle. A doji followed by a gap up is your best friend. The reason we call it your best friend is because not only is the probabilities of it going higher, but the magnitude of the move is extremely strong. So when we do our top rank signals and patterns training, which is about 15, I put this as number one because of three factors. One, high probability of the direction of the trend. Two, the magnitude of the move. And three, the frequency that you can see these signals. So that, if the reason, and again, number one doesn't mean that it's great and number 15 is ah. Eh. They're all good. We'll just kind of put them in a quantitative uh, format. So inside and outside bars are not important, not as important than golfing. Uh, so inside and outside bars are not as important than engulfing and harming pins. Inside and outside bars. I don't understand what an inside and outside bar. An inside candle or an inside day is usually a harami where it opens above the previous day's close and closes below the previous day's open, inside day. Uh, does the previous day have to be the opposite color of the engulfing candle. It usually is, but that doesn't negate the fact that if you have a bullish candle in the oversold area and the next day they gap it down below the previous day's open and then come right back up and close it above the previous day's close, so it's you've got two bullish candles, that still represents the same thing. The bulls have taken control. But usually a bullish engulfing is, I don't have one on here, is uh, where they have in the oversold area, and again, this is the simplicity of the logic of candle or the Japanese race traders. If you see a bullish signal in the oversold area, that usually indicates there's been a change of investor sentiment. If you see a candlestick sell signal in the overbought area, that usually tells you that uptrend's over, the downtrend started. So best friend signal, how long do you hold on to this one? until you see a candlestick sell signal and a close below the T-line. Now, why is that important? Because if any of you were like me, that any time I had a profit, my biggest fear was, boy, if I let this go turn into a loss, boy, would I look stupid. I better take a profit because I have a profit. Well, candlestick confirmation uh, it keeps you from doing that. What's the whole point of investing? To find big price moves. Not to cut off big price moves when you think you have enough profits. The whole point is to hold that position until you see a sell signal. Oh, Niels, I would guess that you're going to see a best friend signal probably if not once a day, once every other day or every third day. Every time you do a scan, and my most simplest scan is, I want to see which stocks had the biggest percent price move today. I can go down that list of the top ones and go through the first 50 in probably about a minute and a half. And out of that first, what did I just say, 50 positions, I'm going to find three, five, seven, eight good reversal signals of which it's not unusual to find a best friend signal or any of the other candlestick signals. Engulfing. Bar two engulfs the body of bar one. 
it is the body. No, it is the body or the body plus wicks. You can have the body. It's just the body. Now, if it if it does the wicks also, that's that much more compelling. What about just a close below the T line? Uh, if I was up here and there was a day where let's say it opened here and closed here because the t-line had been acting as a support and there was no sell signal i give it one more day but i need to see it open positive and trade positive the best friend signal is right here a doji followed by a gap up in this case it's very relevant because it's a doji followed by a gap up in the oversold area and a close above the T-line. If I scan and find this, I have a very simple entry strategy. If it opens positive the next day, you want to be buying. Uh, Julia, before the T-line was brought to my attention, I did the same thing. I would say, all right, I see a sell signal. I'm clever. I'm going to close it out because if it doesn't uh, go down, goes back up, I can always buy it back. Well, usually when I close this out, I already moved to another position. Now I know just to hold on to it until I see a confirmed sell signal. What happens if you... Yes. A best friend midday, but by the end of the day it reverses. Do you get out of the position? Uh, yes, the best friend signal is a bullish candle and a close above, or not in this case, a close, a, a bullish candle. I would like to see it close above the T line. Now, if it traded up and then by the end of the day came back down here and I had bought earlier, yeah, I'd close it out and wait for it to get back up above the T-line. Remember, the T-line is a high, high, high probability factor. Um, I'm going to see. We don't know. Is there a worse best friend? Yes, on the sell side. And I'll try to find some of those as we go along. So, best friend breaking out right here on the F. Uh, uh, 50, that's just a high probability. That's where everybody is buying. Now, the left-right combo is also a doji, but it's a doji left-right or a bullish engulfing following a doji. Now, this is one of your strongest signals. You don't need confirmation. If you happen to see it forming, you can be buying as long as it closes out as, as that signal. Please, can you please make your T-line green and thicker so it, the T-line is the black line. Uh, Bill, I'll put the stop on which one? All, uh, all what a theory being spot if on an option doubles in 24 hours, I'm out. All right. Uh -huh. Do these rules hold good for intraday? Yes. Candlestick signals are the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. I trade cattle, soybeans, the dollar intraday and I use the 10 minute chart. The T line is the eight exponential moving average. We call it the T line short for trigger line or trade line. Just a very simple rule. If you see a candlestick buy signal and a close above the T line, you can stay long as long as you stay above the T line without a sell signal. Uh, Sandman, bring that up when we go to live charts. 
Uh, Tam, yes. That's what the discipline is that you bring into using the probabilities of candlestick signals. And I'll show you some of that as we go along. Uh, we'll bring that one up also. Um, all right, let me... What if in a bearish overall market conditions, would you still go ahead to buy a bullish left-right combo candle towards the end of the day or wait? I, Carrie, I wait till the next day. Remember, we're taking everything into consideration. If the market is in a downtrend and you see buy signals, I definitely want to see bullish confirmation the next day. In the live room, do you trade live every day? Uh, John, I don't trade enough to uh, 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 show live trades, but I do, when I do put on a position, I post it right away. Um, and then I usually bring up the chart to show why we're buying calls or puts or uh, buying the stock. Um, so in the chat room, I am watching it all day long, usually in the morning after the we put out stock picks the night before. Uh, I put in text comments. Uh, every night I put out two or three stock picks so that, uh, not so that people just have stock picks, but I do it in a video format so you can see why it was being recommended. What were the signals, what were the patterns, and what was the market analysis to tell us we wanted to be shorting this stock or buying that stock. Then in the morning, we'll make text commentary. And then as the market settles down, I come in around noontime, uh, supposedly for an hour, but usually everybody's starving by the time I get done. And then I'll come back in about 15 minutes before the market closes to kind of finish up. Uh, I'll bring that up when we get a live charts. Oh, this is Boeing. Uh, where is the buy point? If I saw the left-right combo and it started trading positive the next day, that's when I would be buying. Or if I see a left-right combo and I want to wait, um, I can buy up here when it closes above the uh, T-line. But if I see a left-right combo, I'm usually buying. Uh, which is more important, stochastics overbought or oversold, or support? The most important factor is the signal itself. And then, where are we on the stochastics? So, and then, where are we as far as any other level everybody else is watching? So, it's not like you have to decide step one, step two, step three. You can look at this immediately and say, oops, they're buying down here, about the same level they bought before. Stochastic's coming up. I'm getting ready to buy. What is the left-right combo? The left-right combo was the doji followed by a bullish engulfing signal. Combo is green, red, green. No, just the doji followed by the bullish engulfing. That was my left-right combo. That told me I was likely in an uptrend from there. Okay, the bullish flutter kicker signal is different than the doji sandwich. We haven't done the doji sandwich, but this is where you can just kind of visually recognize what the strength is on this chart. Downtrend, 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 oversold, opens here, closes here, and then they gap it up. Where did they gap it up? Above the previous day's open. And did a doji. Well, what's the first thing we can rec recognize in that trade or that setup? There was strong buying going on. Now, it didn't finish as strong buying as a doji. And what's our doji rule? The price is going to move in the direction of how they open it. So I'm buying immediately right here because it's already told us we've had a strong move and now they're still adding to it. So what do we know about a positive open after a doji? It's going to trade positive. Why do we call this a bullish flutter kicker signal? 
because if you took out this little flutter, which was the alert to tell us to get ready to buy, you've got basically a kicker signal, which is your strongest individual candlestick signal. Same scenario on the downside. Look at all the elements that you can see just visually on this trade. You're in the overbought area. Look how far away you've moved from the T-line. And then the next day, they gap it down below the previous day's open. In the overbought area that far away from the T-line, there's only one thing you want to do from that point. Close out the trade. Now, what's our doji rule? If they open it lower the next day, where do you think the next target's going to be? Down here to the T-line. That is telling you the downtrend is starting. The doji sandwich is the same as a flutter kicker, except this is a green candle day instead of a red candle. They take it up as a doji, and then the doji rule is if they open up positive, they're going to trade positive. Please define the T-line. The T-line is the 8 exponential moving average. Now go further here. How is it calculated? It's the 8 exponential moving average. You put it on your chart just like you would the 50-day simple moving average. Uh, John, you can, if you record, if you registered, you'll, you will get the recording. Um, Jim, the recording guy is recording it. Could you have entered on day one? Not really, because you probably wouldn't have recognized it on day one. Everything else was, you had other things going on. But then you saw that it was a kind of a morning star type signal, a close above the T-line. You could have been coming in on the doji day. Even if you didn't come in on the doji day, you already had your setup, a bullish candle followed by a doji. Stochastic's coming up. You're trading above the T-line. And your doji rule says if it opens positive, the magnitude of that candle right there it's usually going to be about the same magnitude as that candle. So what does that tell you about the 200? 200 is now not acting as a resistance level. Now, there is one thing that we can kind of assume about a doji sandwich, that there's going to be more upside afterwards. It's a, a bullish signal. Does it matter whether the doji is above the body you want to have it, yeah, you'd like to have it above, but it can be right near the top. What you don't want to see is it back down in the middle of that candle. That doesn't tell you anything about the bulls. Stochastics are slow stochastics. And it doesn't really matter. You're using stochastics to tell us where we are in the trend. Obviously, a candlestick buy signal in the overbought condition doesn't mean a heck of a lot. A candlestick sell signal in the oversold area doesn't mean a heck of a lot. What we're looking for is that candlestick buy signal in the oversold area, and we're looking for that candlestick sell signal in the overbought area. So it just kind of tells you where you are, and if you're in the overbought area, now you want to be a little bit more diligent as far as seeing if there's going to be some sell signals. Oh, you guys have got me way off track here. Oh, we're getting close. No, we're not. So 2 plus 2, look at your best friend's signal. Gap up through the T-line. Does a doji type day right here on the 50-day moving average. So how does it help you? Even if you're a day trader, this is a tremendously good setup. Because if they open up positive, what do we know is likely to happen? That this day right here is going to be the same magnitude as this day right here. So it makes for day traders a good day trade setup, number one. Number two, what's it tell you about the 50-day moving average? It's not acting as resistance anymore. Look for your next target. So APO today, oh boy, I'm colorblind. Is that a red candle? 
You can't even tell. It doesn't matter whether it's a red candle or a green candle. The fact that it did a doji gap up through the T-line, stochastics coming up. They did it off the 200-day moving average. If it opens positive tomorrow, what do you have? How come I can't see? No, that's a that's a bullish flutter kicker signal setup. This is a red candle. If they open this positive tomorrow, you can be buying immediately. Not a McMuffin, eh, not quite a McMuffin, but that type of uh, setup. But just the fact that they gapped it up, did a doji, if they open it positive, you've got an extremely high probability they're going to be taking it higher. So one of the aspects of candlestick signals is that a doji means indecision. Hold on, I got to wet my whistle here because I'm talking faster than I can think, which isn't very fast. But if one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. So that tells me if I'm in the oversold area and I'm seeing a bunch of dojis, I'm getting ready for this candle. I may not see it that day, but when I do scan at night and see this was a big percent move, and I saw it was after a series of dojis, I'm getting ready to buy because we know what to expect. If one doji means indecision, a series of dojis means greater indecision. And the longer and the greater this indecision is, usually the more powerful that next price move will be. Now, the McMuffin. If we can add things together to improve the probabilities of being in the right trade at the right time, that's what a McMuffin is. A McMuffin is a morning star signal. Remember, the morning star signal is one of your 12 major signals. That alone tells you from the statistics of the Japanese rice traders, or the analysis of the Japanese rice traders, that there's probably a reversal. Then the next candle pattern is the doji sandwich. So if we know that the morning star signal implies there's going to be a reversal, and we know that the McMuffin, I'm sorry, the doji sandwich, tells us there's going to be more upside, that's just kind of a double whammy that you're in an upside. We call it the McMuffin because it's a morning star signal followed by a doji sandwich or your morning sandwich, your McMuffin. What if the dojis are moving up like EOG? Uh, bring that up when we go to the live charts. Unless there was one in here. No, no bring it up when we go to the live charts. So anytime, I mean, that alone tells me that, oh, there's a reversal. You add that to it, that tells me not only do we have a reversal, but now the probabilities of that reversal is that much greater. So the reason I'm pointing out these patterns um, because anytime we can see something that's going to improve our probabilities, and the reason this is so, oh, I'll say, compelling to me is before candlesticks came along, I was the worst investor in the world. I was a stockbroker for eight years. And I realized that brokerage firms had no more idea about what made stocks go up or down than the man in the moon. And so when I started researching these patterns and seeing what the probabilities were, it took me a while to even become convinced that I was seeing things that were too good to be true. The old saying, if it's too good to be true, it's probably not happening. But now I know when I see different signals and patterns, not, not only do they produce high probabilities of being in the right move, but they also produce high probabilities of being in the right direction. So these 
the analysis and especially with signals that have dojis in them, it just allows you to be that much more prepared for being in the uh, uh, <laughs> Bob. It, it just uh, now not only am I looking to be in the right trade at the right time, but I'm trying to find the strongest right trade at the right time. So when if we're in an uptrend, I want to make as much money as I can during that uptrend. If we're in a downtrend, I want to make as much money as I can in that downtrend. So anyways, Sandman, that was that that was our uh, affiliate promo. This, we're going to be doing a uh, the the two day or the full day training Saturday, February fifth. These are very comfortable. We get there at ten. We go to we're supposed to be two o'clock, but they'll usually end up around four o'clock. But the nice thing is that the repetition of what we're looking at and the droning of my voice just allows you not to have to memorize things, but your visual memory will kick in. So the next time you see a pattern set up, um, you recognize it. Uh, you don't have to learn it. You just you recognize it and say, oh, this is something I need to be looking at and going after. So here is our marketing ploy. Yeah, Becky just put in a Here's our marketing ploy. It's $197 for non-members. For members, it's $97. So here's where we're trying to trick you. Join, even if it's for one month, for $97, and then go to the session, the training for, a, for $97, the worst case scenario is at least you've paid for 30 days of a trial of using our uh, using the chat room. Now our chat room right now has approximately 100 and anywhere some anywhere from 175 to 190 people in it every day, and you've got lots of good traders in there that recognize good signals and patterns. And if you're learning candlestick analysis. This is a good way to expedite your learning process. Um, because you could ask questions. Plus, you've got traders out there saying, hey, look at X, Y, Z. Uh, it's because it's probably got a good bullish pattern or a good uh, bearish pattern. And then, as I mentioned, I come in for a little over an hour at lunch, and we go through charts. So you're, you're constantly in a learning process. When I put out the stock picks at night, they'll, if we think the market's going up, you'll probably get three long recommendations. If we think the market's going down, you get three short recommendations. If we don't know which way the market's going, you might get two longs and two shorts, depending on how the market opens the next day. But each video, two-minute video at night for the picks, is explaining why that pick is being recommended, what the attributes are of that signal or pattern. Okay, so I'm going to, so Becky's put in the link. Um, now, I am going to try to do this. Jim, uh, I don't know how close I will get this. Oh, it's already 9 o'clock. We haven't even done the live charts yet. Are we close on this? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn this off for a second. Oh, Sandman, the reason I bring other people on is just to bore you a little bit more. When I was in high school, I forget what I was taking, calculus or something, and had a cute teacher, 
but I just was not getting it. And so I had to go to summer school. And I went to summer school, fortunately, with a uh, teacher that had taught my older sister, who she really liked. And in summer school, it all clicked because he had a different way of presenting investing. Um, so the reason I bring other traders on or other speakers on is because I know candlestick signals work. Sometimes it just doesn't sink into some people. But if you find somebody else that has a trading uh, system really clicks with you, it's not that candlestick signals don't work for you. It's that if that other trading system works, you still overlay your candlestick charts on it and just kind of enhance whatever that trading method is. All right, so here's where the common sense of the candlestick signals and confirmations becomes very relevant. And I will show somebody was saying, oh, it's hard sometimes to fit with your discipline. The other day, so here's what the analysis would be of the downtrend. There was a big hammer signal in the oversold area on the Dow. The next day, they traded positive but did a doji. All right, that's telling us we're getting near a bottom. The next day, meaning yesterday, it opened positive and traded positive. Now, I was short quite a few positions. And I'm thinking, all right, I should be covering the short, but we don't have one final confirmation, which was a close above the T-line. That, just that fact that you didn't close above the T-line still illustrates what our high probability aspect of human nature is telling us for the T-line as a uh, aspect of, uh, is it an hourly chart? No, this is a daily chart. Um, so I held on saying, all right, I'm going to wait to see if they close above the T-line. And obviously they didn't. Today they took it back up again, but they still couldn't close it above the T-line. So I had, I was short in Roku to make this big. And the day before, traded up, came back down. We're still in a downtrend. Then yesterday they opened it positive and traded positive. I'm thinking, oh man but I still had to be patient and wait to see if they were going to close it above the T-line, which obviously they didn't. Uh, Bryce, yes, on all time frames. Remember, the definition of a candlestick signal is the graphic depiction of everybody buying and selling during a specific time frame. It works just as well on a one-minute chart as it does on a monthly chart. So, this was excruciating. Even today, they traded it up again and then reversed it and came back down. So the one thing I have learned through all my years is if the T-line is the criteria that you use as your final decision making, you have to wait to see if it closes above the T-line. If it doesn't, you're still in a downtrend. And that was the same scenario that we've seen the last few days here on the NASDAQ. They took it right up. Now, I want to point this out again with great enthusiasm. Notice they gapped it up yesterday and took it up to where? The T-line. And then failed. Why is that relevant to us? Because nobody has the T-line on their chart. It took it up to a level that we know acts like a natural support and resistance level and everybody else would be watching it they don't have a t-line on there so that's that gives you that much more credence 
that the T line is a natural support and resistance level of human nature. Yeah, so I use all time frames. Let me pull up. Uh, I have, haven't been trading the futures for the last few days. But notice that wheat had a big reversal signal. Now, if I was trading wheat, I traded off my 10-minute chart. So I might have been selling it here and then closing it out right in here, ready to reshort it. Um, and if I'm trading off my 10-minute chart, I better... I think that's a reversal, and it's just starting to act up or go positive. Then I flip to my five-minute chart and saying, what's my five-minute chart doing? I know it's trading positive, and it's not backing off below the five-minute T-line. That's a pretty good indication that my 10-minute chart's not going to be backing off. Again, they are fractals, yes. Raj, it depends on who you're, what chart service you're using. Now, this chart service is CQG. I don't recommend it because it's about $1,300 or $1,400 a month. Uh, TOS are very good charts. And you can set it up the exact same way. I think I can even pull. This is what my... my uh, uh, cost charts look like. All right, so now let's go to, again, some of the ones that have been working successfully. Now, I'm, people say, well, you're only showing the ones that work. The benefit of candlesticks is we know when something's working and we know right away when something's not working. So it's that old sage advice, cut your losses short and let your profits run, but nobody ever tells you how to do that. Um, candlesticks work very effectively for doing that. If you're doing something and it's supposed to be doing something and you see the chart not working because that they're not confirming, close it out, move on to something else. Uh, Darren, do they have candlesticks on their charts? Uh, Bill, I use Metastock. Oh, who was it? Somebody was asking that they were trading uh, in the uh, did they say Indian market and up. Metastock trades has charts for all markets and they are very good as far as not only do they have uh, so many indicators that you probably would never use all of them but they also have our system on their their charting where if you buy the uh, candlestick package every time you pull up a chart it will show you what the signals are and not only show you what the signals are but there'll be a box that explains what that signal is um, so, Bill, uh, that's what I was saying. Think or swim. No, not think or swim. TC2000 and Metastock are the two charting services I recommend. I think, yeah. You know, now, CQG was the grandfather of a lot of these charting, of, of charting. So, a lot of the uh, charting services get their feed from CQG. I pay for charts if they are free almost everywhere. Because of the uh, the speed of this uh, one, Greg, plus I trade commodities, and so there's a lot of charting services that don't have commodities on their chart live. Now, Metastock does. Um, I've just, and I use this one because they are so clear, and that if I want to go from one chart to the next, we don't have to wait. Um, I can go right to uh, uh, type on the new chart, and it's right there. So for these type of sessions, 
if I used another charting service, it might be another 45 minutes longer just to just do the same amount of charts that uh, we we look at. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, DS, it all matters of what you're trading. If you're trading stocks and futures and currencies, you probably want to use MetaStock. If you're just trading U.S. stocks, you could use TC2000. You can save all your settings, yes. Okay, opinion on Tesla. Right now, obviously, it's in a downtrend, kind of a dumpling top. Now you want to watch tomorrow what it does here at the 200-day moving average. That's the same scenario as with Lucid. I don't know why the 200 doesn't come up on this chart, but it closed right smack dab on the 200 today. So what we're going to be watching tomorrow is, well, Shazam. To see if the is still heading down, if they break through the 200, which is right at that level. Tesla, an inverse J hook. Now, this little part right here, yes. Now, these are important. Because that tells you they popped it up, they failed at the uh, key line. Uh, so anytime you see something like that, it tells you they aren't taking it up, they're still taking it down. That's why we recommended a while back going short on AZ uh, EK. There was another one, I think, Crocs. Now this one failed at the T line and started back down. Can you explain why yesterday is okay on uh, Draft King? Why yesterday, DraftKing, it was wrong to jump in to trade too early for some of us who jumped the gun. And that's exactly what, what uh, if I see something trading like this, and you jump the gun, what is our trend analysis indicator? The T-line. What's our rule about the uh, T-line? You stay long as long as it stays above the T line. So if I bought here, which I've done many of these myself, this is why I know to wait now to see where it closes. Because if it comes back down and closes here, first of all, when it opened here and started trading up, what color candle did you have? You had a green candle. As soon as it came back down through the T line, that was a warning. As soon as it came back down through the open, remember what happened on the open. That told you the bulls were in control. When they came back down through that level, that told you right away the bears were in control. Close out the position. Because now what's your factors? One, you don't have a bullish candle. Two, you're back below the T-line. And what's your probability? If you're back below the T-line, you're definitely not in an uptrend. Now, here's the thing that helped me tremendously with my ego. I've eventually discovered that probably approximately 30% of my trades aren't going to work, or at least not going to work the first time. Now, that used to crush me because I'm thinking, man, I found a trading system that works an extremely high percentage of the time, but I'm still hitting losing trades. And then some years back, it finally dawned on me that approximately 30% of the trades aren't going to work. Not because you analyzed wrong or that you did something stupid or something wrong. Just 30% of the trades aren't going to work. As soon as that sunk into my psyche, if I bought up here because I thought this was a good bullish uh, best friend gap up, 
I knew to close it out here. I would rather take a small loss on a trade that didn't work than sit with something and say, ah, I'm hoping it's going to work, which I used to do. Now I close it out and I go find a better trade. No percentage, uh, Bryce. The market doesn't give a hoot where you bought. What you're looking at is what is the investor sentiment telling me? It's going positive. Right here it tells me it's going negative. I don't care whether that was a 3% loss, a 7%, a 9%. That trade didn't work. Close it out and move on to something else. So an, an extensive part of successful trading is not only identifying which positions are going to make good trades, but identifying very quick, quickly which trade you might have gotten into that isn't working and closing it out. Now, I can pretty much guarantee you that if, you, if I bought this yesterday and it came down and I stopped out and I took a small loss, I'm not even going to remember that trade today because I'm already looking for something else that uh, is hopefully going to work. I don't have a whole bunch here, but let's take a look at a few. So if I'm looking at this one, where did this fail? Right here at the 200 with kind of a dark cloud. This is Las Vegas Sands. Where do you think your next target's going to be? Back down here. That was kind of the same rationale as, oh, for, okay, there it is, apron. This is where I use the term 2 plus 2. If I can see a sell signal at a level everybody else is watching, the casting's heading down, close below the T-line, I've got a high probability trade heading in one direction. XLNX, when you see something like this, when they've gapped it up and brought it right back down, who's still in control? The bears are still in control. And not only are they in control, they're probably getting a little bit more force to the downside. So yesterday, you saw that same scenario here in uh, Microsoft. Now, this is why you let the charts tell you what everybody thinks, not what you think, or in my case, what I think. Our good earnings in Microsoft, it should be going up. Well, somebody doesn't think so, and it doesn't matter what I think. This is now not a good trade. You move on to something else. Uh, Bill, the way I offset that, it's so hard to take a loss. Mentally, yes. However, the way you get out of that syndrome is that every time you have a small loss, close it out and move on to a better chart. Because at the end of the day, I forget about the small losses I took because I've hopefully got a few good trades where the end of the day or the end of the week or the end of the month, my portfolio or my account is bigger than what it was at the beginning. And I won't remember the losing trades. That's just cost of uh, doing business. Darren, I don't you yeah, I don't know which one you were referring to. So everything that I do as far as analyzing and teaching candlesticks is what do I do to keep my emotions out of my trading? Because my emotions, like most people, is the bugaboo of our investment. We're, we're doing what we think is the right thing to do, which obviously, based upon candlestick analysis, the reason candlesticks are so effective, it's telling you what people are actually doing, and most people do exactly what is counterintuitive of what is uh, going on in a, in a stock price. That's where the uh, Japanese rice traders saying 
is where do most people sell? They panic sell at the bottom. That's human nature. Where do most people buy? They buy exuberantly at the top. Well, since I knew I always did that, logically I had to think, well, if that's what I'm doing wrong, I need to turn that around 180 degrees because when I'm panic selling at the bottom, I was always asking myself, who the heck is buying this down here? Aren't they they're stupid? No, that's the smart money. I'm the stupid one that was selling into them. They were buying low. I was selling low. Uh, let's see. All right. Let me. All right. So uh, I've got a few charts on here that. So there's your kicker signal, which is one of your strongest signals in SUS. That's not what I wanted. And this is another chart pattern that you want to be aware of. Notice how this is what we call the message. Notice how they took it up and then they sold it off. Not a good looking chart. However, what was the message? The message was they were buying with great enthusiasm. Then there was profit taking. So what do we look for? We're looking for the end of that profit taking. So that continuation of that enthusiasm, which is usually a high probability uh, setup. Uh, the patterns that usually don't need confirmation is Bob the kicker signal and usually the left right combo. But everything else, a lot of people say, well, can't you buy as the signal's developing? You might not see the signal developing. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be identified by, a, uh, by doing your scan at night. I had something on here to illustrate. Oh, so there's your, this is the, what I would call the power signals, where you have kind of a bearish left right combo, and then they gap it down the next day. Now, in the old days, you know, if I had a profit, I'm going to, you know, and I was short, I'm going to take it because, boy, I don't want this to go back to the loss. Now I know I can sit with this position as long as it stays below the T line. Um, Let's see, which one else? Same scenario. Look at the probability factor on this chart. There's our bearish left-right combo that failed right at the 50, closed below the T-line. And how many buy signals did you see? There was a bullish engulfing signal. There's a left-right combo. But what were the other factors that told you, eh, you better wait? Castic still heading down, and you're still below the T-line. Dumpling top, then down J-hook. On this one, yes. Um, and the failure rate at the 50. So anytime I can see they failed at a level, especially when they failed and closed back below the T-line, that tells me my probabilities are pretty strong. Now, what's my... Risk reward factor, I'm figuring it's going this way. What could happen? They could pop it right back up. If I shorted it and then they close it up here, all right, I'm right back out with a small loss. So the risk factor is I'm getting into something where if it doesn't work, I'm out with a small loss. If it works, I could ride a, a situation like this. Do you analyze sectors for stocks you like as secondary confirmation? You can. On, uh, oh, I've just switched over to the TC2020 system, and it's got lots of benefits where I can go right to a, a scan, just clicking on a tab, and it takes me to the sectors, which sectors were the strongest. So if you want to put all your stars in alignment, if the trucking industry has got a strong signal today, and it's kind of forming a J-hook pattern on the 
Trucking Industry ETF. Now I can just click on which stocks are in that sector and see which one of those stocks have the strongest signals or patterns. That tells me they're buying that sector, and now I'm buying the best stocks in that sector. Do you always better to buy? Now, very rarely, Bill, will I buy at the close. Usually I'm using the close to close out bad positions. Very rarely will I buy on the close because um, I want to see what the markets are going to do the next day. Uh, PRPL on a big down trend. There were two left-right combos indicating it was going up. Does that make the downtrend more powerful because the bears took out? Um, not necessarily. Um, I, once the downtrend started, I would still wait to see if they uh, were going to close up above the T-line. Now, that's also a function of what direction is the market going at that time. If the market's still heading down, yeah, I'm probably not going to put as much weight into a bullish uh, signal. Chicken Hawk, good seeing you. You mind looking at BX? That's your bullish doji sandwich. And it broke this level. So where's your next likely target? Well, you stay long. Let's see if it goes to the 50-day moving average. Boeing, observe the obvious. Look at your shooting star doji, evening star signal, close below the T-line. How long do you stay short on Boeing? As long as you don't see a buy signal or close above the T-line. Now, what are the other indicators that tell you you might get ready for if you were short to take profits? Well, look where it's heading, right there. And you're moving a little bit away from the T-line. You're not quite in the oversold area, but I would still be a little bit more diligent to watch what everybody else is watching. Okay, I guess that's about all I got. Hold on, I had, no, well, maybe I did have some. No, I did. Now, obviously, with the market heading down, there's not as many good bullish signals. Oh, whose handwriting is this? So here's one that might be doing a J-hook pattern. This is GMVD. That's one to keep an eye on the bullish side. If you're more conservative, you can see Bristol Myers is doing kind of a scoop pattern, supporting off the 34 right at this level. If it comes back up through here, you're probably still in this uptrend. On the downside, Somebody was asking, is there a best for bad friend? Well, this is your bearish best friend, Doji Gap Down. That's usually implying there's going to be a lot more downside. What was the other one that did that? No, just that gap down. So here is one that we've been following in the options room. But if it was doing kind of a dumpling top, you could stay short, stay short, stay short. And now here is the benefit of staying be short below the T-line, that type of situation. Also, a decrease in volume sometimes. Remember, we're not trading volume. We're, we're trading price. BRTX, William, I would just stay short. You can see how they took it up, and then they couldn't get up through the uh, T-line. If I was short, I'd just have a safety stop above the T-line. Hold on for one second. Down after earnings, okay. Let me take a quick look at that. That was NOC. Yeah, they're trading a little bit lower after hours. 
And for some reason, I wanted to show this. No, here's that bearish series of doji's bearish confirmation. Now look at your bearish J-hook pattern potential. Oops. No. No. So if this opened lower tomorrow, what do you got going on? Wave one, wave two, heading into wave three. All right, let's do this. Jim, let's go ahead and do the double line. Since that's where we are. All right, and then three, no, 2.1 seconds through the uh, double line. All right, I'll try to do some of these real fast. Cal, nothing. Would not be long or short. There's no direction to this one. Bank of America, uh, boy, I would probably be thinking about going short if they open this one lower tomorrow. Occidental. You stay long, but I'd probably use today's low as a stop. Apache, that one I would have probably have closed out today and wouldn't pay attention to it until it comes back up through uh, the high. EOG, you stay long. Uh, Conoco was actually acting pretty good. There's a J-hook pattern in progress there. And Exxon Mobil. Not real vivacious today, but nothing wrong with that uptrend. Myrna. Bah. Well, for crying out loud. Can't you type? Stay short. Look at that signal right there. That's a strong indication that they're sending it lower. Again, we saw that kind of same scenario in uh, Microsoft yesterday. I would be more inclined to think that one's heading lower. Guild, uh, you can stay short. However, doji doji, I would still use the T-line. If I was short, I'd still use the T-line as my uh, stop. Suze is way up after hours. Uh, let me see. Oh. Ah, uh, yes. Let's see where they are. Yeah, they they that one's Suze has moved up nicely. WRBY, you could go short on this one, and then you just have to watch to see what it does here at this level to confirm your uh, uh, various J-hook pattern. And Voss, that's kind of a nothing chart. That's another one that when it came up and then came back down through the open, I would have closed it out. I'd be someplace else. CCMP, you stay short. I would suspect it's going to the 50-day moving average. And big, that one you get ready to go short, especially if it comes down through this level. Martin Marietta, if you were short, Notice what it did. That was if that's a bearish candle. And then they gapped it up. If they opened this positive and I was short, I'd cover it. Wouldn't necessarily be going long, but I wouldn't uh, I would cover the short position. Amazon nothing. Is today's candle on Amazon a doji and is the body too fat? Uh no, it's not a doji. It's more of a shooting star. But it's really not nothing. It's just a formation day. Um, you could buy on positive trading, but again, you still have to get up through the uh, through the T line. 
Uh, this is a nothing chart. I'd be someplace else. There's no direction to it. Uh, nothing there that would make you want to go after it. DWAC has drifted lower. If it doesn't do something big tomorrow, I would close it out and wait for the next. Unfortunately, the next buy signal can be fairly substantial. It's one of these, I think, that once it gets moving, uh, people rush into it and don't, don't give you a lot of time to get into it. Uh, I think they reported earnings. Let me see what they're doing. B -L -V. Yeah, they're trading. How come they had a, they're, they've got a big bearish candle right now. That one you could go short. AATC, that's a kicker signal. Big hammer, kicker signal, scoop type pattern. But it almost looks like there's not a lot of volume on that one. Oh, dang. Try to do things quickly and just keep goofing up. Oh, for crying out loud. Okay, it traded 106,000 shares a day, and it was a big day. So this is a very low-volume stock, Bill or Bob. I would probably stay away from it. If you're buying it, you're buying it with, with a small uh, position. San Juan. You can stay long, it, and I wouldn't want to see it close back below the T-line. If it comes back and closes below the T-line, it's basically in a nothing trend. And CVS, all you can do here is stay long as long as it stays above the T-line. Apple bounced back up. Where is Apple right now? Why am I doing the same stupid thing over and over? Apple right now looks like it's trading up 754. It's trading at 176, 167. So it's trading up in this range. Not a real decisive candle. Oh, I guess this is the candle of today. Right now, it's now a candle that's trading up here, with this being the tail. So, boy, I wouldn't be buying it yet until they confirm that they're going to stay up above the T-line. Square, stay short. I'm just making sure some of these after hours. Uh, I don't know if there's a bad print on this. It looks like it spiked. And it looks like there was a spike in that price. So that's got a bad chart to it. Dang it. I am just doing everything wrong here. All right. Amen. Stay short. AMD. Stay short. Oops, scroll too fast. Way too fast. Where the heck did I just go to? TDG, stay short on this one. AutoZone, if you're short, stay short. Use the T-line as your stop. Conoco, you could buy this. It's got kind of a 
uh, trend kicker J hook, you could buy it with the expectation you're still in a steady uptrend. SU, another one you could buy on positive trading. Don't let it close back below the T line. Did we do oxy? I thought we did. Oxy close lower. Use today's low as your stop. Chewy was a good short for us. We covered it right here. Uh, it's not shortable yet. You don't know which way it's going. I'd be shorting it on a, a strong sell. CCMP, all you can do is stay short, expecting to head to the uh, 50. Home Depot. Did I do this right? Something is wrong here. Home Depot over here is a lot different. Oh, that's a weekly chart. Home Depot, nothing. Wouldn't be long or short, this one. You bounced off the bottom, but you're not going anywhere. Sophie, stay short. Freeport, stay short. Now you want to see, now that it's not held the uh, 200, where it's heading to. Uh, it could be. So this is the analysis for the uh, the Dow. I'm going to make this smaller for a second. You can see how there's kind of a, a base right in here. Let's just do it right here. So we don't know whether it's basing or whether it's doing a bearish J-hook. We'll need more information to uh, uh, make that assessment. So obviously, we don't want to see it, if you're bearish, you don't want to see it close above the T-line. If you're bearish, you want to see it open lower and doing a bearish J-hook pattern. If it starts trading positive, you've got to start assuming that down here is where they're basing it, that you start thinking about covering short positions, and then if it closes above the T-line, then you add long positions. VIG, stay short. UVXY, you can stay long on this one. Use the T-line as your stop. We did Amazon. Roblox, stay short. Look at your little evening star failure right here at the 200. XLE, another one that you can stay long, but I'd use today's low as your stop. NVIDIA, get ready to short this one on your bearish J-hook pattern setup. Apple is now trading up here. So it's got a long tail and a body from here. So now that's just tonight. You still have to see what it does going into the uh, uh, the close or on the open tomorrow. The UIMs right now are just trading. You know, are they up? Let me see what it's doing. I guess they're trading up a little bit. What are the cues doing? Not the cues don't show anything yet. Uh, FedEx. J 
just stay short. Use the T-line as your stop. UPS, same scenario. Starbucks. Get ready to short this if it comes down through this level. Right now, uh, yeah, the only place I'd be is short. I wouldn't want to see it come back up through the, uh, uh, the T-line. Next on mobile, you can just stay long as long as that stays above the T-line. Let's see. The dollar up pretty strong here recently. Broke out through this level. I guess that is... Is that why gold is selling off? And AFRM, all you can do is stay short on this one. UCO. Crude oil. Still in an uptrend. Not selling off right now. And Netflix popped up today but did it indecisively. So if it opens positive tomorrow, you've got a bullish flutter kicker, kind of expect at least coming back up to test the T-line. An AMR, nothing great here. Having a hard time getting up through the T-line. INDO had a big day, but this is where you use, if you were trading this today, this is where the 10-minute chart comes into effect. So here's one of the things I use when trading anything. If I'm trading soybeans or cattle, and you see that initial move, as soon as you see the first sell signal, you close it out. Because logic says that's where the bulls and the bears have finally come into equilibrium after a big move. More than likely, after that big move, the price goes relatively flat. You can go someplace else uh, to trade. That was off the 10-minute chart. Socks, just stay short. XOP, too late to short, kind of a very straight hook. XOP, that's not a real good-looking chart. That's pretty choppy. You could short this, anticipating a bearish J-hook uh, type pattern at the 200. Uh, Darren, I've got so many chart services now. What you need to do or what each individual needs to do is check out the chart services and see which is the best for them. Vet, if you were long, I probably would have closed this out today on that weakness and only pay attention if it comes back up through this level. Because so that's telling me that uh, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of enthusiasm right now. And on E... ENPH, keep an eye on these type of patterns. Here's your bearish left-right combo. Telling you the downtrend was still moving with great enthusiasm. Royal Caribbean, you could be shorting this one. Carnival, could be shorting this one. Uh, And Norwegian, you could be shorting this one. Yeah, the YMs are up, but that doesn't mean anything right now. Um, what's happening right now may not 
be anywhere close to what's going on first thing tomorrow morning. Gold is selling off pretty hard. But right now, it wouldn't be in any of the gold stocks. They do not have good charts. You might even be thinking about uh, going short on those. We did UPS. Looking to continue my bearish vertical credit spread on... I don't know whether SPX comes up over here. No, it doesn't. Uh, let's see. What is that? Is it... And Alaska Air. Now this is one where if I had bought this today, which I was thinking about, when it would have come back down through the days open, I would have closed it out. Southwest. You can see they've had a hard time getting back up through the T line, I'd be ready to short this one. Uh, kind of this we did in the video. This one you could be shorting on weakness, giving you kind of a bearish J hook pattern at the uh, 50 day moving average. And L P L A is another one that if I had bought this one on positive trading today, I would have closed it out when it came back down through the open. Silver is still on a, a, a slow downtrend. Look stronger over here in the February. So gold and silver are selling off. JP Morgan. Bah. Could be a bearish J hook pattern, yes. So if you're shorting this, you want to see if it gets down through this level. But there's a bearish left right combo. What'd that tell you about the T line? T line still acting as a, uh, a resistance level. Okay, so you have to watch to see how these markets open tomorrow because of Apple uh, coming out with good earnings. But remember, Microsoft came out with good earnings and that didn't change the market effect. All right, everybody, have a good evening. The evening's over. We'll see everybody bright and early, yes, and uh, plan on, if it's going to be cold and yucky on Saturday. Not this Saturday, probably this Saturday, but February 5th. Plan to join us. Like you'll get a lot more than your money is worth when you come to one of these sessions. So with that, we'll see everybody bright and early in the chat rooms tomorrow. We'll see you then.